Everyone calls me Boards. You're welcome under my roof, ASDF, and to share my food and warmth, but I have one rule by which you must abide. Okay, you must not look at my daughter. It doesn't matter to me what you investigate. I simply tell you, you must not look at my daughter. Um, oh, oh. Oh. That's a, that's a problem. Hello everyone, my name is ASDF. Welcome back to Bud's Burger Barn. Actually, no, they're all closed. Uh, welcome back to Shadows Over Loathing. We are just investigating the new map. We went to the Doll Gilmore house, met the uh, crazy author, and uh, yeah, Taco, welcome. How you doing? How's work going? I was just talking to that mutual friend of ours that was also associated with what you do for work, and uh, we had a good time on Sunday hanging out, so... Okay, we can go. We just discovered the... Is this the Puckwudgie Village? In the distance, you see a pile of gravel. Why are you being so distant? And we got some frosty flakes, so... There we go. Music seem a little loud? I guess not. I think my headphones are just turned up quite a bit, so... These look like cardboard cutouts of buildings. Miniature firehouse, you hear some Puckwudgies milling around inside. Oh, 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 these guys are strong. That one just hit for so much damage. Okay, we need to... Summon the Golem. Buff all the stats, set everybody on fire, and then strain them. Oh, we didn't we didn't need to do any of that, actually. We could have just strained them. Okay, that's fine. Uh, that's awesome, doing good. You have today off, so you've been relaxing. Oh, nice, nice. Orange hat, okay, pretty decent hat. An arson charm, set an enemy on fire equal to your moxie once per fight. That's pretty cool. What's our offhand doing now? Increase all of ally. Okay, well that's that's just better. A nine moxie. A miniature jewelry store looks like it's open for biz business. You punch a hole through the back wall of the store and take everything that fits you. We got an armband and a thunder ring. Makes it dangerous to be near you in combat. Makes it sound like that's gonna hit our allies. So, uh, the hospital is a place of healing and hurting. Another fight, dude. We're getting hit for so much damage. Holy moly. Okay. Summon the golem, set everybody on fire, buff all our teammates' stats, and then strain them. Okay. Just, it's just in case. I don't know. Maybe we're going to run into some crazy hard one, but I don't want to have to go look at every single one. Increases muscle and maximum AP. Another hat. A purple hat. We have an orange hat, and we have a purple hat. This seems like a pretty good accessory for health. Um, what is this giant bush doing right here? You can see my legs through the center. Okay. A high-rise apartment building. You could easily rile a few of them up if you banged on some windows. Okay, we'll do another fight. Minus three to all stats. Parents have been remodeling the house, so it should look completely different by the time you come back. Oh, no way. Dude, that's awesome. I love, uh, I love remodels. I love the idea of it because it reminds me of my childhood. So, okay, we'll strain them. We'll punch them. And we'll chomp them. And we got ourselves, okay, we got a poison file, arson charm again. Weapon attack supply, three poison. Could be really good because, well, we're already setting people on fire. If we had one of these that set them on fire, that would be amazing because we're hitting every enemy. So, yeah. All right. A uh, high-rise apartment building you could easily, okay. Well, that's probably an infinite fight. Established July 22nd, 1828. Okay, we can go check that date. By the temperature and architecture, you'd say this is an ice house. You peek inside the ice house. It's full of big, plump, chilled grubs. Gross. The redo in the living room, kitchen, and back patio in your room also got repainted. Oh, okay, cool. Yeah. Yeah, that's uh, that's going to be a big renovation. Through the skylight, you can see the Pukwudgie massage therapist hard at work. Pull them out. Those aren't massage therapists. Those are, those are beating my mosquito up. That's what they are. Okay, we'll summon, we'll set on fire, we'll buff the stats, and then we will strain them, punch them, chomp them. Boom, massage oil, purple hat. Okay, we still got the vial of poison. Uh, the barracks must be here where they keep their little army. Well, we're gonna declare war. Dude, it did so much damage. Holy moly, what are these guys all offense, no defense? I mean, they have a decent amount of HP, too. Man, that was nuts. Okay. Oh, we didn't even need to summon this guy. 
A shank deals moxie and physical damage and causes bleeding. And a green hat, nice. And Buzz goes stronger again. Okay, we're gonna reach inside. Shadow Milkshake, great. Uh, it's kind of an RPG. Kind of a, uh, just kind of, it's, it's kind of just a ridiculous RPG game. Yeah. So, um, we're going back to the feed store. Unless we find something on the way, the wind blows an old sheet of paper into your face with a flap. Kind of nostalgic. You peel it off and read it, because <laughs> we started with a magazine on our face. Izzy, I stashed the meat from the bank job under the old burnt tree. Meet me there Tuesday to divvy it up. Don't tell Marv. I want to cut that dumb palooka out of the deal. <laughs> Imagine calling being called a dumb palooka. You look around and discover that you're standing next to an old lightning blasted oak tree with a hole dug next to it. Three skeletons are lying around the hole with rusted pistols still clenched in their hands. In the hole, you find a big burlap sack with the symbol for meat stenciled on the side. The three of them died for 28 meat, which is about enough to ride the bus. Because that guy from the swamp kept uh, coming over and telling us, ooh, hobo coat, 15. Okay, spray on asbestos, nice. And a uh, combat item, which we're probably not going to use. So this burly old lady looks like she can kick your butt despite her age and eye patch. She looks you up and down with narrowed eyes and then gives you a slight nod, apparently deciding you aren't a threat to be immediately pummeled into the ground. Uh, hi, I'm ASDF. Xenia Wakefield. Nice to meet you, Xenia. You look reasonably capable. Got time to run a quick errand? Well, depends on who's asking Xenia Wakefield. Uh, what's the story been about so far? I haven't been able to see the other streams. If it's too long, you don't need to explain. I mean, so we're trying to find Uncle Murray. And he went after some cursed artifact. And so we're, like, hunting down the cursed artifacts in the area to try to rescue him. But we don't know which one he went after. So we don't know. Like, we just have to go do them all. And that's how the chapters are divvied up. So what kind of errand are we talking about, Xenia? A farmer named Mac... Millic Millican Cuddy borrowed something from me and I'm gonna need it soon, that's all. Go get, come back, couldn't be simpler. My experience is that nothing is ever that simple. Ha! Ain't that the truth. I don't expect any trouble though. I will do it. Let's go to Mac... Mac M Malinkin Doodles Farm. <laughs> huh? Smell shadow. Smell booze. Shadow beer. Okay. Uh, the two of you look around for a bit and find an old shed. Alphonse casually tears the door off its hinges, and the two of you find an old still inside. The liquor in the catch bucket is dead black, and thin tendrils of smoke waft up from the surface. Ferment weird? I guess it's the dark side of the moonshine. Ha! Ha! For you heavy metal fans out there. Actually, I don't think they're metal. Are they rock? Um, dude's going crazy. I can't even move that fast. Everything okay? No, bloody ain't! A great flock of giant jerks has only invaded me farm and ah, they've got into me out buildings. Oh, mm, do you want some help with that? Oh, well, standing here waving me arms and yelling isn't he have much effect? So I could do with a uh, horn, I reckon, eh? I, uh, you great numpty. <laughs> well, now I want Jacksepticeye to play this game just for this interaction. <laughs> Somebody tag him in the comments. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I'm on it. Ducks everywhere, I'm telling you. The barrel barrel, the dungstead, the gurnal, the ice brush, the sloppin' shayin', the steamy. Um, what's a sloppin' shylin'? It's the shylin' we use for slog hoppin'. I mean hog sloppin'. Crivens, the blitterin' is doing me a hit in. Uh, right, okay. Um, what's a, what's a steamy? Uh, that's for doing laundry and ah, we take our bath there too. I see. Nothing like a hot bath after a hard dog. Ah, uh, well, I thought I saw. What's a what's a butt for? Oh, to keep your ciggy from burning your lips. Nice try, your weapon. Uh, okay. Shucks. What's a what's a dungstead? It's for ripening the manure in. I'd have thought it started out pretty ripe as it is. I could always be riper. <laughs> okay, we're out of here. Thank you. We have to deal with this guy's outhouse. This is uh, McMillan Cuddy's, uh, McMillican Cuddy's steamy hut. You hear a lot of splashing and loud duck noises coming from inside. You open the door to a room full of tin baths and wash tubs, plus a couple large stoves for heating water on. Giant ducks are splashing around in the tubs, boiling big buckets of water to fill the room with steam. Just And just generally having a, a raucous sauna party. Turn up the heat, fight, blow your haunted duck call. You hear a questioning, what? 
from inside, but otherwise the ducks don't seem interested. Okay, turn up the heat. Uh, what with all the steam, the ducks don't notice you enter right away. You throw more coal on the fires and stoke them extra hot, and soon the whole steam is boiling hot enough to run an industrial turbine. Ducks start fainting left and right, the more resilient ones stagger outside and stumble away panting. You drag the fainted ones to the barn and lock them inside for safekeeping. Okay then. Apparently a shiling is a sort of hut or shed. This one smells like a place where pigs eat. Which is an idea reinforced by the rows of feeding troughs full of ripening garbage and several large barrels of leftover cooking oil. A gang of huge ducks seem to have taken particularly interest in the oil and are whooshing around in it, around the place, and generally wrecking everything with wild abandon. Uh, oh, we don't have sleaze armor. We can get sleaze armor though, real quick. Uh, armor, sleaze. We can get. What's this? An accessory? We'll equip that. And we'll equip the wax slacks, yes. And the rest are consumables, which I don't want to take. So hopefully that's enough. Yeah, chase them out of there. Uh, you weather the storm of gross oil and verbal abuse and boot the ducks out of the shiling. It's pretty easy since they're so lubed up it only takes one boot to make them slide right out the door and into the barn. Okay, let's put our stuff back on. We usually take... What do we usually take? Did we equip... Oh, the monster sash. And the pants just don't really matter. But we were using... Search the pockets? There's a furled piece of paper in one of the pockets. Unfurl it. Monday, 2572. Tuesday, 3572. Can a riverboat just run? This is from the boat in the swamp, I believe. Claude Joseph got in a terrible spat with the new captain. Andrew embellished his qualifications and isn't trained. Already feeling the strain. Had to lock up the outhouses by myself. Usually a three-man job. Oh, so this probably would have been the combo. Um, I don't even know if we read that before. I just didn't even realize. So waxed, slacks. I don't know what we did. Probably the ciabatta pants. It doesn't, doesn't really matter. Uh, a silent anvil next to a roaring forge. Beat your plowshare into a sword. We got a beaten sword. Okay. Cool. This is McMillican Millic Mc McMillican Cuddy's Gurnal. Apparently, there's a grain silo and not where you go to make funny faces. The noises coming from it are what you would expect to hear from several giant decks that have found their way to an actual grain silo. Physical armor, huh? Well, I can get some physical armor. Filter for physical arm. That's a much easier filter. Okay, the work pants gives us four. Is that enough? It is. And we'll just leave the work pants on. We don't need the extra mysticality. You climb the ladder and peer in a bunch of very large, and now even larger ducks are swimming around happily in Max Grain, much like I would do if the silo was full of mini marshmallows. Having gorged themselves on Max Grain stores, the ducks are too sleepy to do much to you. Their feeble blows bounce off your armor, and you shove them out of the gurnal and roll them to the barn for safekeeping. <laughs> Imagine rolling ducks to the barn. This building, we're gonna need stench armor, I already know. I already know. Um, we will wear the perfumed wedding veil, which I would have thought was a headpiece, but I guess not. So, that, and we can wear the gas mask. Uh, you hear a bunch of giant ducks quacking, away happily in there, it seems unreal that anything could be happy anywhere near it. Your eyes start to water as you peek inside, a few, through the gas mask. A few large and extremely filthy ducks are lounging around in here. It's unclear if they were filthy to begin with or if that's just the natural result of the situation. You take a deep breath and hold it as long as you can. <gasps> Which turned out to be just long enough to go inside there and shoo all the ducks out. They leave without much fuss probably because they were surprised by a force you to wander over to the barn. <sighs> okay. There's a big block of ice just sitting here. I guess someone forgot to haul it uh, into the brooch. It doesn't seem to be melting for some reason. Take it to the speakeasy for iced drinks. Heck yeah! The sheep is evidently taking up smoking cigars and having a human face to smoke them out of. Did you hear it? It was like... Uh. Bah? Nice tribe, you aren't pulling the wool over my eyes. Well, that was worth a shot. Hi, I'm Beatrice. Hi, I'm ASDF. Why are you disguised as a sheep? Well, I was hoboing past this place and saw a pie cooling on the windowsill. Oh, wow. Yeah, exactly. No hobo can resist that. Alright. If you don't want hobos by your place, don't put pies in the open windowsills. But just as I was sneaking up to grab it, I got attacked by a whole bunch of humongous ducks. I had to disguise myself as a sheep to get them to leave me alone. That's a surprisingly sensible reason. Thank you. Alright, we're going to ask about code. Um, 
Oh, she won't teach me code until all the ducks are gone. So we probably need cold armor, which we are fine with because we have tons of cold armor and hot armor from the books. You can just read about it. Where's the creepy tiara? There we go. And what do we have on the Monster Club staff? Investigate. We don't have... How do we not have enough cold armor for this? We definitely have enough cold armor. Plus three cold armor. What do we have then? Hot armor? Spooky armor? Hot armor. Oh, we have hot armor. Okay. Alright, alright. We need cold armor. I understand. On it. The sailor's cap is enough. These ducks don't really seem to mind the cold at all. Maybe they're the sort that fly north for the winter. Fly north for the winter. Okay. Break the ice. Since professional ice hockey has only been to the local area for about four years, it's no wonder these ducks weren't expecting you to just charge in and body check them right out the door and into the barn. Not so mighty now, huh? Okay, uh, this pile of rocks is apparently a barrow that has a sort of tomb made up by piling rocks. Uh, McMillican Cuddy, I said it right that time, called it a barrow barrow though, which is less clear. You need to barrow a dictionary. You hear an ominous rhythmic quacking sound from within, as though several very large ducks were chanting ancient cultural rites. You peek inside the barrow and discover that yes indeed, several lar very large ducks are in fact chanting ancient cults rites in there. Also the place is strewn with pig bones, and I don't know if you learn to identify pig bones specifically, but I guess a barrow is also a type of pig? Since you don't know any actual rituals to banish cultist ducks, you decide to just wing it. Ha. Anyway, basically you knock over their candles and mess up their magical circle and yell about blasphemy and stuff until the party is thoroughly ruined and they all leave muttering gloomily. So, there. Uh, oh, and here's the barn. So, I don't think we need to fight any ducks. That should be all of them. I'm gonna put my creepy, glorious tiara back on. And we'll talk to... What's your face? Ask about the hobo code. Are those giant ducks still wandering around? Nope, took care of them. It's safe now. Oh, that's a huge relief. Sure, I know some farm-related hobo code. She teaches you a few symbols, most importantly pointing out the differences between the symbols for grain and fertilizer. You want to make bread with grain. You do not want to make bread with fertilizer. And then we'll tell her about the hobo camp. Uh, there's a hobo community forming outside Ocean City. It might be more fun for you than pretending to be a sheep out of fear for your life. Hmm. Are the ducks still wandering around this place? Nope, took care of them. It's all good. Oh, great. My back is killing me. A long walk upright like a normal human being sounds pretty good right about now. She stands up haltingly and limps away without removing the costume. Oh, I thought this guy was the... Was her, her but he wasn't. A pile of firewood and a disorganized mess. We stacked it. All right. We got some XP from it. Okay, I took care of those ducks for you. I you did to be sure. I'm much beholden to you, laddie. Couldn't have dealt with the ducks on my own. That's for certies. Uh, was there something you was wanting then? Oh, right. I met a lady named Xenia who said she loaned you a paperweight. She needs it back. A paperweight, she called it. Ha! Well, no, I suppose it could be in a pinch. Here you are then, and tell her... Uh, how's it going for me? A Xenia's paperweight. Ah, it's that kind of paperweight. Thanks. Bye. Well, nice. We, uh, did that pretty quick. We gotta get back to the feed store. Oh, you notice an especially strong petrochemical smell nestled in between all the medium strength petrochemical smells this region is full of. You glance in the direction of the smell and see a big pool of crude oil writhing around and burbling to itself. Let's go check it out. The burbling ooze. It's clear across town. I don't know how I smelled it from the other side. There's gonna be a rock. Really? This place is the pits. Ha. Head out. Who's gonna stop me? Ha! Alright, no, I'm never leaving because of that pun. This is it. Oh, here's the rock. The rock is thrumming with a weird greasy energy. You explore the rock's feelings with your mind as you explore its cracks and crevices with your fingers. That... That's weird. Um... This ooze is really burbling. If, it ta if you taunted it, you could probably get it to attack you. Well, let's fish in it first. Uh, we got Oilman Stetson. Nice hat. Okay. Let's keep fishing. One wet cigarette. That is pretty gross. Nice potion, too. I did not mean to do that. Okay. Well, I guess we'll do a six on fire, summon the beast, buff the stats, and do ourselves a strain. We're going to hit one with a pow, and then we're going to try to do a uh, shadow tongue right here. 
Nice. Electrified oil increases mysticality by one, maximum AP by one, and the magic attacks by three. Adds meat drops to pants, and nice. Plus moxie meat drops. I wanted to fish for the last one. Another one wet cigarette. And we're not going to keep taunting it because we don't need to. We'll go back to the feed store unless we get distracted. A gang of puckwudgies rush you on the dirt road and show you a very provocative flipbook that you guess they've drawn themselves? Some nasty pictures in there. <laughs> Make it even more provocative. With a waggle of the eyebrow, you pull a pen and add a couple of nauseating details to the narrative presented in the flipbook. The pugwudgies pour over the new pages together and all at once burst into tears. You've done well. And, and by that, I mean we have made it a horrible thing. You get my paperweight back from McMillican Cuddy yet? Uh, why did you say it like that? No reason. Got it right here. Ah, good. She slides the paperweight onto her right hand and smacks it against her left palm a couple of times. Missed that feeling. Thanks. I'm scared of her. A woman with long silver hair and a sultry smile is chatting with Xenia. Long lashed eyes sparkle at you from behind her spectacles. Her voice is a purr. Hey there, sweet thing. I'm Yola. Yola Kinmundi. Nice to meet you. I'm ASDF Gaming. Care to do a lady a little favor, ASDF? What kind of favor are you looking for? I'm desperately thirsty, but I need something specific. A glass of milk. Milk? A charming young man named Milkman Stan used to deliver the best milk in the county, but he's vanished mysteriously. The last anyone saw him, he was making a delivery to the Drexel place. Could you find him for me? Pretty please. Her eyelashes flutter as she makes puppy dog eyes at you. Sure, happy to help. I knew I could count on you. Here, let me give you directions. Unlock the Drexel stead. Uh, bring me back a glass of milk once you find him, okay, sweetheart? Okay, leave it to me. Let's go to the, the Drexel stead. Uh, carrion birds surrounds an unidentified, an unidentifiable carcass. They scram when you approach, leaving the puzzle of bones behind. Uh, the head bones connect to the- Yes, that is an owl skeleton. You recognize it from the owl skeleton museum you were trapped in as a child. How many relics have you gone after so far? Um, haven't really been relics per se, but we've got some pretty powerful gear going. It says Drexel. There's nothing in here but additional rust. Okay, we're gonna reach inside here and get some shadow mead. See what's inside this car. Jimmy the lock. We got a jewelry case. You managed to unlock the door destroying the hangar. The car is mostly full of old receipts, but there's a jewelry box in the glove compartment, which we will open. We got a turquoise bangle, nice, and a bezor ring, very nice. What in the world is this? This vaguely house-shaped thing is very hard to look at. I don't know what to do about this. Um, what, what do we do about this? Uh, that obelisk business was strange. Hmm. Maybe we wander the cornfield. An impenetrable seeming wall of corn. Try to push through it. Got it. When in doubt, push through it. Okay, let's see. Um, this arcane oven is somehow still working. Any crazy fancy foods? No, it's the same stuff, so. Uh, whatever this thing is, it's a cold one of those things. Broken popcorn machine. Um, somebody must have thrown this fridge away because it was upside down. We got a refrigeration coil. We could sell it. And this guy, this hobo is humming cheerfully while roasting some corn. Hi there, I'm Cornelius. Pleased to meet ya. Hi Cornelius, I'm ASDF. What are you up to? Corn is what I'm up to, friend. Up to my neck in it. There is a lot of that around here, yeah. Sure is, and let me tell you, I couldn't be happier. When you're a hobo, your food options are a bit scarce, you know? But you can do just about anything with corn. Muffins, fritters, bread, pudding, tamales, on the cobs, you name it. Is your name really Cornelius? That's right, I don't believe in destiny, but that's a pretty weird coincidence, ain't it? Oh, I was afraid I was g it was gonna be some sort of routine where you hadn't noticed and I'd have to explain it. Haha, <laughs> nope, in fact, I think my name's probably the main reason Billy sent me here. Who's Billy? Oh, uh, we don't talk about Billy. But we don't talk about Billy. Huh, okay. Uh, you know any hobo code you could teach me? As a matter of fact, I know several hobo code words. Are they all, c they are all corn related, yes. Ask about something else. You know, there's a big hobo camp setting up near Ocean City. They got a nice community going. It's better than this cornfield, that's for sure. Ah, uh, thanks, but I like it here. Look at all this corn. Nah, I feel pretty good about my situation. Um, 
I get your reluctance to leave all this corn behind, but the other hobos at the camp could really benefit from it too. It's not like I can just carry it all with me. Well, I know some magic. I could probably set up a small, specific use portal for you. You mean... a cornhole? Dude, I love cornhole. A cornhole, yeah. Well, heck, let's do it! You magic up a cornhole in the nearby field and Cornelius packs a few ears into a bindle for the road. Nice. We can fish in his corn boiling pot over the fire. We'll continue fishing. A single kernel of corn. Nice. This is some really classy video game music. It's like a string, it's like a whole orchestra, but like a really small orchestra. We can keep fishing forever. You think? We're just getting a single kernel every time, so I'm not gonna keep going. Um, we can fish in here. Why not? We got a handful of soapy water. Okay. We can fix the radio. The radio's working now, but for some reason you can't find any stations to tune it to. Well, that was a waste. Oh, uh, huh. The crows in this place must be absolutely terrifying if this thing is necessary. It ain't any less freakish up close. We'll fight it. We fought the last one that was shooting at us. So, summon our golem. I don't know why Alph Alphonse isn't here. Maybe he didn't decide to push through the thing, so. Um, strain him. 23 HP. He hasn't attacked us yet. Oh, instant hit. One hit kill. No thanks. Scarecrow hat, six spooky armor, and a severed scarecrow face. Reduce all enemy stats by five. That's pretty good. I'd rather buff my teammates. Um, you could possibly squeeze through the corn here. A woman in surgical gloves, gaze lost in the depths of the maze. Ah, the, the maze like corn. Uh, hello, I'm Dr. Sarah. Do you have an appointment? I didn't know I needed one to be in a cornfield. What are you doing out here? Oh, general dentistry, cleanings, implants, etc. I mean, what are you doing in a cornfield? Huh, now that you mention it, I don't really remember. You don't look happy. I don't get to see many patients in this cornfield, you know? I'm, I'm worried my wet finger's getting rusty. You're what now? Wet finger? Oh, sorry, that's what we dentists call the finger we poke around in your mouth, because of how wet it gets. Uh, suddenly I don't feel very well. Do you need some dental work done? Would you mind if I did some, if only for practice? Sure. Okay, we got badly misaligned teeth. Okay, picture, uh, picture your mouth as wide as it can go, and then multiply that by 10, and that's what I want. You struggle and strain to accommodate her long, rubber-gloved fingers as they make through the prodding, uh, thorough prodding investigations of the back molars. You've got beautiful teeth. I'm just going to suggest a few changes. There we go. I'll finish. Do you have a mirror? A what? <sighs> I'm not happy with my teeth situation. Um, no, and if I'm candid, I know that's not my best work. Would you give me a chance to put it right? Oh, you know we're going to... She rubs her drill. Um, you won't be sorry. We lost badly misaligned teeth. Oof, does that... Wait, we got no teeth at all. Okay, uh, well, never mind what I said a second ago. What? I want my teeth back. <laughs> I appreciate you bearing with me, but I don't like to leave a job unfinished. I always say if it were up to me, we wouldn't call it dentistry, we'd call it dentisto. Dentist do, not dentist try. Will you give me one last chance to fix your teeth? Do you mean put new stuff in my mouth where my teeth used to be? <laughs> yes, if the answer to the question I think you're asking. Yes, please. Dr. Sir asks you to say, ah, which is about all you can. While your mouth is hanging open, she rummages a mound for something in her purse. We lost no teeth at all. Oh, thank goodness. Imagine if I'd just thrown them away. We got perfect teeth plus one moxie. A beautiful new set of pearly whites with enough bite to disembowel a leopard. Great. You know, let's say that's enough practice for, day, for today. I agree 100%. You don't seem very happy, though. Just thinking that your average patient is more at ease having treatment in a modern dental surgery than a labyrinth cornfield. Yeah, I can say that was a problem for me, for sure. I'd like my little patcher to feel more like a dentist's office, and it's missing something. Something that says dentists. Uh, a sign? What? A sign that says dentist? I was speaking more metaphorically than that, but I mean, if you happen to find one, sure. But no, guess again. Teeth? Teeth, that's it, precisely. We'd all feel more comfortable with a lot more teeth around. I don't think so. Um, would you mind looking for an anatomical teeth model or anything else that looks like teeth? Besides corn, I have plenty of that. I will see what I can do. Um, oh, teeth. I have these. Smart thinking. I always carry a few as backup myself. Do you want these ones? Oh, no. What I'm looking for is like a whole set of teeth, not Lucy's. Okay. What do you make of these? Hmm, if I'm not mistaken, those teeth belong to a grandfather. 
Do you want them? You asked for teeth. Oh no, what I'm looking for is like a whole set of teeth, not loose. But that was a whole set. Okay, well if we find a whole set of teeth, we will go- There was a guy over there. Why was there a guy over there? A glum looking little girl stands here, listlessly pulling petals off cornflower. Hello there. What's so good about it? What? Oh, sorry, I wasn't really listening. What's your name? Cecilia. That's a really pretty name. Everyone calls me Sissy. Oh, well, that's fine, too. What are you doing in this cornfield? Nothing. I mean, why are you here? I got in a fight with my little brother, Billy, but I don't remember what we were fighting about. I don't see the connection. He sent me here. This is where he sends everything he doesn't like. Huh. Do you like it here? I... I don't know. I've been here so long. I don't even remember how long. Everything here is just... It's just corn. What is there to like or not like? What would that even mean? Wow, you are way too young for this level of annoy. Eh, you must miss a lot of things from before. I miss ice cream. There's nothing here except corn. I used to like corn. Now it's just corn. Anything else? I miss my cat. He was fluffy and black. He probably still is, I guess. Is that all you miss? I miss the sun. It's always so gray and cloudy here. It never even turns into nighttime. First it was fun to not have a bedtime. Now it's just confusing. I miss my teddy, it might be too old for him now, I'm not sure how old I am, but I miss him anyway. I miss my friends, mainly I miss my best friend Darla, she was really good at jump rope, I probably missed her birthday, I might have missed a lot of her birthdays. Anything else? Alright, see you later sissy. Oh, nice, a wire coat hanger, to jimmy into cars and things. Sadly it doesn't contain to a portal to a magical world of fantasy, I guess you can cut a hole in the back, then at least it would contain a portal to a magical world of corn. What it does contain is an assortment of drab church clothes for a boy. Nothing here is of your size or denomination. I thought it might be different if we looked in the back. This looks like an ice cream truck, but the label makes a significantly different claim. Creamed corn. Hi there! I'm Ike Bremen, the ice uh, creamed corn man. That sure doesn't roll off the tongue the way it used to. You selling creamed corn out of an ice cream truck? Yeah, well if I had some ice, I could sell you some ice cream. Uh, if I had some cream. Say, you seem like a guy who doesn't have an expensive truck to keep an eye on, and is free to come and go as he pleases. If you could do me a couple of favors, I'd appreciate it. Okay. What kind of favors? I need I, I need cream, and a lot of it. Like a barrel of it. Plus a part to make my freezer unit work again. What part? I don't know, I'm not really a mechanically minded guy. It's a thing that makes the inside of the box cold. Well, we have the freezer part. I think this might be the part you're looking for. Oh, hey, yeah, that looks familiar. Thanks, buddy. Give me a second to hammer this in and change my sign. Iced corn. Oh, we should have bought, we should have bought the creamed corn. We got iced corn. Okay. Um. We need. How'd you get it in here? Last thing I remember is telling a kid I was out of bomb pops. Feels like ages ago now. Are you still out of bomb pops? Even more than I was then. Okay, we need some a barrel of cream for this guy. Uh, dire corn holder. Is this stock of evil corn because of this? malevolent maze or is it the other way around or is it just a coincidence perhaps we'll never know mysticality plus seven damage that's pretty good toys this box is full of disused disregarded and slowly disintegrated toys geez how long have these been in there um there's a whole lot what are you looking for so this is teddy bear nice uh teddy bear and that sweet spot where it's worn out enough to be charming but not worn out enough to be super creepy nice uh and we need teeth you got wind up chattering teeth. Yeah, that'll work. I don't know what it said. That's a very large crow. Crows are usually very wary around humans, not because they're high, strong, or cowardly, but because they're intelligent. They're aware of the fact that their bones are thin and hollow and that humans are much bigger than they are. This crow knows what it means for the tables to be turned. It spreads its wings in an intimidating display, makes a sound like a rusty garage door had a baby with a burst of radio static. Uh, well, that's not outside the realm of possibility to make friends. Uh, lots of people know make friends with crows primarily by feeding them. This crow lives in a possibly infinite dimension warped cornfield, though. From the looks of him, he's taking full advantage of that situation. So it's probably a non-starter unless you've got something much better than ordinary corn. Okay, I think if we get the ice cream, that'll be better. Oh, milk! Nice! A sullen milkman. Hi there, are you a milkman? <sighs> Yeah, Milkman Stan, that's me. How'd you end up in here? I don't want to talk about that. Why so glum? Oh, I'm so glad you asked. None of the others will listen to me complain anymore. Uh, for starters, it's extremely boring here. And I don't have anything to read except my sign. Oh, yeah, that sounds pretty bad. Let me tell you. After a couple of times, the twist at the end really loses its thrill. What? And you know what's even worse than that? 
I guess not. I'm allergic to corn. If I eat a single kernel, my face swells up like a frog on a bicycle pump. Oh, jeez, then what have you been eating? Just the leaves and husks. On the bright side, I bet I got the cleanest colon in the tri-country area. Uh, and then there's the weather. Can you believe this weather? It seems fine? It never changes. It's just this gray, slightly chilly nothing. Always. I don't understand how the corn even grows here. It never rains. Wouldn't that be worse if it was raining? It would be novel, at least. I guess that... And then I have to deal with some cat running around. It got on my bow tie while I was sleeping and totally shredded it. I look like some kind of degenerate. Gee, that's a shame. I can't even try to catch it and eat it because I'm also allergic to cat meat. He's not allergic to cats. He's allergic to cat meat. I like Stan considerably less now. Oh, and there's the crazy dentist who hangs out on the other side of the cornfield who keeps trying to talk to me about calcium. I tried to tell her, lady, I just sell milk. I don't know anything about the chemical properties of calcium in relation to teeth and bones. Ah, oh, she's probably just starting a conversation because she's lonely. Yeah, lonely like a fox. I've seen the way she looks at my teeth. Well, I, and the worst thing? You want to know the worst thing? Sure. I've got corns. Uh, corns, like the kind you get on your feet. Little painful wads of callus. Not only are they painful and annoying, I'm just constantly being taunted by how on the nose it is. Anyway, thanks for me listening. I don't meet a lot of new people, as you can imagine. Don't mention it. Will you sell me some milk? Uh, sure, sure. They don't call me Milkman Stan on account of not selling milk. Uh, it's 3,000 meat per barrel. Are you joking? It's the only milk in the maze. Geographical Monopoly. I have smaller quantities available if you're experiencing a cash shortfall at the moment. They're listed on the sign there. Guess we'll buy a barrel. We got a barrel of old style milk. Good thing we had so much. Oh, I just saw the hydrate from probably ages ago. Okay. No milk right now, thank you. Well, we got the milk that was for sale. Now we can give this to the guy and get some ice cream. Um, give him the milk. I found you a barrel of milk. Milk, eh? That's the nearest thing to cream I've tried yet. Thanks. Let me just change my sign here and I'll be right back with you. Creamed ice. Hey there, want to buy some creamed ice? Sure. Gives you three regen and one AP regen. That's pretty good. Um, wait, creamed ice? Oh, uh, yeah, it turns out there's more to making ice cream than just ice and cream, but I don't have the equipment for it. I got pretty close, I think. Okay, we only have 900 meat now. Let's see if we can give this to the crow, though. We might be able to. Uh, make friends with it. Okay, no, we need to back away slowly. That's fine. Go back down here. Who's this guy? A serious man in the military. Excuse turn, hut, name, rank, and serial number. Uh, ASDF Gaming, fair to middling, and, uh, six? A likely story. How do I know you aren't a spy? A spy for who? Crows? You know dang well who I mean, those dirty blues. Blues? Are you talking about the Blue Cola Army? You dang right I am, and I won't stand for any of their filthy espionage tactics. Sir, the Cola Wars ended almost a full decade ago. Oh, oh yes, that's true. <laughs> Excuse me, something about this place makes it easy to forget. At ease, then you may address me as Colonel Benedetto. Uh, Benedetto. Nice to meet you, Colonel. So how are things? By things, I presume you're referring to troop morale? You have troops here? Certainly, the milkman and the dentist and the ice cream man and the, er, little girl. Those people aren't- Yes, yes, I know they aren't soldiers. I know that. Huh. Okay, how's the morale? Hmm. Well, right now I'd rate it at a 3 out of 10. Terrible. Better than it has been, but not by much. We're in no shape to withstand a blue assault. How did you get here? That information is strictly on a need-to-know basis, soldier. You don't have the clearance. Come on, Colonel. This isn't mil a military operation. Er, no, I suppose not. Nevertheless, I'm not at liberty to discuss it. Loose lips sink ships. What ships? Huh. Huh? Well, whatever. Why don't you just leave? You think I haven't tried? This maze twists upon itself and warps the senses in ways that make escape impossible. Huh, I don't seem to have any trouble coming and going. How did you get here in the first place? I saw a weird house next to a cornfield and just sort of... walked in. Aha! You weren't banished here, therefore the maze has no motivation to keep you here. Banished? Huh, I've said too much already. Um, what about the hobo? Who, Cornelius? What about him? Well, it sounded like he was banished here, but he didn't seem to have any trouble leaving. Of course not. The man's a hobo. Their freedom of travel is practically a paranormal ability. Wish we had a few during the war. They'd have made excellent scouts. Well, if they could be trusted to come back. Huh, weird. What's with all this weird, spiky black corn? We refer to that as maze. Right, yeah, of course you do. Our investigations into its nature have so far proven inconclusive. Do you mean inconclusive? No, I do not. Oh, okay. Leave him to his marching. 
Okay, so we got down to that guy. We need to give the teddy bear back, which will raise morale, hopefully. And she's here, right? Yeah. I found your teddy bear. Um, well, I found a teddy bear, which might be yours. Oh, yes, that's Mr. Grizzles! Gee, he smells kind of musty. Poor Mr. Grizzles, how long has it been? Thank you so much, this makes me feel a lot better. Uh, I bought some thing like ice cream. Oh, thank you! She shakes the bowl of creamed ice, tries it, and tilts her head thoughtfully. Well, it's not what I was expecting, but it's much better than corn. Thanks, mister. You are welcome. We should have bought more. One for the dentist, one for sissy. <coughs> I found some teeth for you. Sarah winds up the teeth and lets them rip. Claggity, claggity, claggity! Oh, look, they're fun! Thank you, that'll be a beautiful addition to my cornfield surgery. I agree? Anything else I can do? You know what would really make this feel like a dentist's office? A popcorn machine. Popcorn always makes me think of the movie theater where my dentist used to operate. Plus, it'll make things much more interesting. Cleaning's much more interesting. I could look out for a popcorn machine, I guess. Well, there was one right out here. Unless it's gone. No, it's right here. Okay, well, this is, this is surprisingly easy and kind of tedious going back and forth, but... It's less tedious than going back and forth between things on the map. Uh, I bought you a popcorn machine. Well, I've never had a patient quite like you. You brought me a popcorn machine and decorative teeth, and you were so understanding about the accidents I made in your mouth. You really put a smile on my face. Maybe you should be the dentist. Aw, shucks. Look how wet your fingers are already. You'd be a natural. I'm blushing. Don't talk about my wet fingers. That's not something you bring up to people. Okay, well, I think... We go talk to military guy again about the morale. And we gotta go behind the ice cream truck too. How's morale? I'd rated it a 7 out of 10. Okay. We've already had ice cream while talking to him. Let's buy another one. We got creamed ice. Let's buy another. Wait, two now. Oh, it's the cat. Oh, okay. Well. The maze is impassable in this direction. Okay. We're gonna have to chase that cat all the way down, aren't we? Oh, we need a saucepan. Um, sell me a saucer of milk. Saucer of oiled style milk, yep. The maze is impossible, so we need to use the saucer. It says it's a quest item before we try to defeat the crow. Um, I'm glad we have like 4,000 meat for this, because we would need a lot. Uh, I don't know how to use it though. A uh, small quantity of milk in a saucer in case you need it for a mixed up tea party or something? No, that's not it. Okay. We need to figure out where to put the saucer to get the cat. Um, I suppose we fight the crow. Which is a bummer, but we kind of have to, so... Yeah. Uh, let's just hope no other crows say that, or you'll be Corvid enemy number one for current and future generations. Is this a massive can of cocktail onions? Nice, an immense can of cocktail onions. We can take it to the speakeasy. Okay, well... We've done all the things here, except for a saucer for the cat. Which, we need to go get the cat for, was it Sissy that needed the cat? But the cat keeps running this way. So, I don't know how to put the saucer down. And we can't go up through there. And it just, it just runs over to here. Can we see it through there? Yeah, we can. Maybe we can have this guy. Um, no. Okay, I'll leave him. Well, I think we've done everything we can in this cornfield. We can give Susie or Sissy maybe some more ice cream, maybe? I guess we can fish for more kernels. Maybe we can make popcorn. No, the popcorn machine was broken. I think I saw your cat. 
Oh, there we go. Really? I didn't know he was in here. Poor ghost. I bet he'd find me if I set out a saucer of milk. I just happen to have one. Oh, thank you. This milk seems a little... vintage? Yeah, well, it's probably fine. She sets the saucer down. After a little while, the corn stalks rustle and the cat you saw before appears with an inquisitive meow. Oh, ghost, it is you. I missed you so much. Thanks, mister. I bet I never would have found him without your help. Oh, you're welcome. New cat unlock. Yeah, ghost spoon. Three cold armor. Beautiful. Now we go talk to the general again. And then... Hopefully everyone's at a 10 now. How's morale? Uh, I rated an 8 out of 10. That's quite good and a marked improvement I'd say, but we still got a ways to go before we're at the top of our game. I don't know what I could do to make people happier. The dentist is done. Crow's gone. Cat's good. Ice cream man's good. Sissy's good. Military man, I think, is good. So, I guess we'll just push through here. I, I really, really don't know what else we could have done with that guy. So, um, I guess we found the milkman. Maybe somebody knows more about it. Rah, hungry. I know, you're always hungry. That's just a basic fact about you. Not baseline. Hungry, hungry. Well, there's a bunch of abandoned farms around. Maybe we can find something. Cows? There haven't been cows in this country for decades. I know. Thinking wishful. Uh, eventually find a pasture with a flock of aimlessly grazing goats. It is maximum HP. Okay, the ensuing carnage is too extreme to describe. Nice. Nice. Um, hello again, darling. Did you find that glass of milk for me yet? It's very important to me. I forgot I'm supposed to bring a glass of milk, not the milkman. Oh, I need like 1,500 meat. Okay, that's fine. Judging by her driving gloves and driving goggles, this woman must be the driving and or driving related fashion accessories. Hi th hey there, how's it going? Name's Farina. Hi, I missed you. have nice goggles. Thanks. Did you cop a gander at my sweet breezer out front? The car? I was wondering why it was tied to a hitching post. A lot of horsepower in that baby, gotta keep her under control. Uh, huh, I get it. Say, word is you're pretty handy in problem solving kind of way. You think you can help me out with a little something? What kind of something? See, my buggy's a real dynamo, but once you taste that kind of power, you're always yearning for more, am I right? You want something to make it faster? I don't know a whole lot about cars. No, no worries, I'm not looking for ad uh, advice. I already got my peepers set on a particular goal. There's an old Ford factory compound not far from here. Before they shut down a while back, they was working on a new kind of engine, one made of beans. Beans? Are you serious? As the day is long! I wouldn't have believed it either, but I saw a test run of the prototypes. Man, it ran like lightning! Right up till it exploded, anyway. Uh, where does they fix that problem, though? Just had to switch to a different kind of beans, and the final pre-production engine should still be in the factory. I just need someone to go snap it for me. Okay, I will do it. Great, I knew you was the right guy. Let me mark the place on your map for you. The old Ford compound. Far as I know, the factory has been abandoned for months. Just ought to be a lead pipe cinch. Just grab the engine and go. How's the chess game going? Too easy, honestly. Grover's too cautious. You want to know the secret to chess? Sure. Control the middle and make everyone else get out of your way. It's just like driving. Now that I think about it, life. Wanda refused to ride with her until he invented the airbag. I see. Won't be seeing ya. Well, we need a lot more meat now, so we might go do some, um, some endless fighting. Even you, good king, must nap from time to time. A burned-out truck cab in the ditch looks like an ideal spot, but you awake in the dirt, limbs stretched and tied by a bunch of puckwudgies. A trap! Well, we'll snap the ropes. The puckwudgies are now so impressed by your show of strength, they proclaim you a new god, or they lose interest in the whole thing. Either way, they wander off. And don't come back now, you hear? Okay, that's a lot of flying beans. A tumultuous beanstorm is preventing access to the bunkhouse. You should find someone who knows more about beans and ask them how to deal with this. Festering pile of decomposing soybeans. Gross. Uh, whatever this building was, it isn't one anymore. Make some potions. We can do fancy potions. It's just, it just, eh. It's just not that good. Okay, um, the smart car smells unbelievably bad. Some kind of beans are blocking your path. Those are pretty strong beans. But also, they they don't have a lot of HP. So, Force Bean. Deal 15 damage to an opponent. More bean monsters. They're so weak. Oh, that guy's not weak, though. Okay, uh, lower all his stats by 7. 
Physical armor, 99. Holy moly. Okay, that's fine, though. We'll burn them. Burn them! We'll buff everyone else. And then, plus 10 to all stats. That's, that's pretty crazy. Okay, he's doing physical damage, right? So let's just heal, uh, we'll heal Buzz. Right? Can I heal Buzz, please? Thank you. And then we'll reduce their stats again. Nah, uh, we'll just we'll just do spooky damage. Okay, loose fist beam. That's it. Search the thing. Ford factory key. Nice. Uh, this plaque is for the factory. Is 1909 employee of the year. I was six years old in 1909. Filing cabinet, which is locked. We unlock it. That might be the easiest puzzle in Adventure Gear. You flip through the folders. It looks like they're employee records, but each one has been sealed in its own envelope. You must—they must take employee privacy real seriously around here. Nothing weird or interesting catches your eye. We're gonna have to go back to that, I bet. Okay, we got a crazy bean thing happening, so I'll do the whole thing. Buff stats, and then strain, and then we'll attack this guy with physical damage. Minus six to all stats. That's a lot. Okay, human bean liver increases your muscle by one at maximum HP by 11. On the one hand, it, it's a human liver, so you shouldn't eat it. On the other hand, the human it came from didn't have an actual human brain, so is it really that different from eating the liver of someone who's dumber than usual? That's weird. Uh, that's a great potion. I don't know how that's a potion, but sure. And we can add poison to a weapon. I wonder if we can add that to our weapon now. Yeah, that weapon won't benefit. Bummer. We got a crescent wand, piece of scrap metal, disposable ratchet, uh, a, a le legolith, not like a legolith, a column of petrified beans, got a lot of shellac, we got a souped up engine, very nice, oh we didn't have to search for any specific employee records, oh there's another door, oh, this break room door is locked, you hear a frantic shushing sounds inside, hello, is someone there? Oh, hey, a person! Yep, that's me. Please, you gotta let us out of here! We've been trapped for ages with nothing to eat but beans! Wow, okay, where's the key? Actually, we welded the lock shut so the bean monsters couldn't get us. You'll need a Jenkins head screwdriver to take the hinges off. Oh, uh, what kind of screwdriver? Jenkins, it's a sort of X shape. One of our mechanics invented it. He just got the patent this year. Wow, nice. Yeah, some guy in Oregon named Philip was super mad. Anyway, there should be one in the bunkhouse. Okay, I'll go look. Wait. Hey, I'm back. Can you remind me what I need to find? Sure. Uh, I happen to know how to deal with the wicked bean storm that's raging in front of the bunkhouse door. No, sorry, we've just been eating beans. Don't know anything about bean storms. Okay, maybe I just fight it? Tumultuous bean storm. Um. Okay, I'll keep an eye out. Philip? In Oregon? Nah. Okay, well we can't do anything there either now, until we find somebody that knows how to do um, beans. There's an ominous crack in the sky, and in the space of a single charged second, the wide farm road is drenched with fast-falling rain that bites to the bone. It's farm rain, alright. Cold as ice and twice as nasty. The long and level plains of this country offer no shelter except perhaps for a lone house to spy off in the distance, perhaps half a mile to the east. Sure, we'll go to the, the Borge house. Check their mail. It says Borge. Gotta paint their fence. Oh, I would have painted their fence had I still had the paint. This quaint and well-maintained farmhouse appears to be the only subtle farmstead in the area. It must be lonely with no neighbors to meet sugar or sugar to borrow. Those with neighbors know they can't go five minutes without asking each other for a cup of sugar. And just the one main, was well, the main things they do, just trading the same sugar back and forth, never gaining anything. A uh, voice muffled and gruff shouts back. Who, who is that there? It's ASDF. Huh? Oh, I can't hear you over the rain. We'll just go in. A pair of muddy boots, too big for your feet. Alphonse is too engrossed in examining the poster. Painting and the church it depicts are in need of some restoration. Just embarrassing, look all around. Farmer clears his throat. Ahem. As you reach toward the handle, he probably doesn't want you prying, and who can blame him? Nothing, it's that disappointing. Uh, would have loved to find some rustic knickknacks. Uh, the old farmer is tan and calloused all over from either a lifetime of farm work or a fall into the vat at the leather factory. Look at you, you are soaked to the bone from the rain. Quick, you must make yourself warm. There's hot spaghetti on the stove and tiles in my wardrobe. Thanks, I'm ASDF by the way. Everyone calls me bored. You're welcome under my roof, ASDF, and to share my food and warmth, but I have one rule by which you must abide. Okay, you must not look at my daughter. 
have you ever seen one of these? You show off the ring of the Fraternal Order of the Traveling Salesman. Pretty funny happenstance, eh? The whole proverbial farmer's daughter thing. He frowns. Uh, it's just a ring I got for investigating a murder. It doesn't matter to me what you investigate. I simply tell you, you must not look at my daughter. Um, oh, oh. Oh. That's a, that's a problem. Um, is this the farmer's daughter? Is she straight out of the ring? Okay, well, I guess this will upload to YouTube and you guys will watch it and have to deal with it, so I won't have to worry about the farmer's daughter haunting me. Oh, now we're alone in a dark bathroom together. Something is terribly wrong for this house. No towels in the bathroom? The daughter's room. Uh, what is this woman thinking watching you inspect her bed? I have a bed too. The daughter's far more silently. The doors yawn apart, revealing a wardrobe consisting largely of ribbons. Seems impractical for life on a farm, and so does the lamp oil sat atop the farm wall, clearly out of the girl's, girl's reach. What's your favorite thing about ribbons? There's no reply, only the vague sense of a change of energy in the air. Um, me too. Feet shuffle along the floorboards. Um, do you want to hear what I like about ribbons? Her fast, shallow breathing picks up its pace. They come in more than one color. Her rapid, sporadic breath slow to a soft drone. Uh, do you need help with the lamp? Need me to light it? Somehow against the constant patter of the rain on the review of the squelch of her blinking eyes. It's pretty high up. Um, small jewelry box is covered in green velvet and secured with a gold clasp. Dust scatters and hangs in the air as you prize apart the clasp and lift the lid. The farmer's daughter observes this, you think, without comment, but you sense that her warm, subdued breaths are becoming shorter and faster. Inside, why, it's only an old necklace with a discolored and worn fleur de lis attached to the uh, chain of model green brass. Nice necklace. You're nothing but the tense simmer of her breaths. Actually, as necklaces go, this is okay at best. This doesn't seem to matter. Can I have this? Bare feet shuffle along the floorboards. Uh, unless you say otherwise, I will assume it's fine for me to take the necklace. She is right on your neck. Okay. I looked at her. I got myself into a corner. Maybe you shouldn't go inside any more houses. Things tend to end badly for the house. Um. Um. Excuse me? I don't know how I could have gotten out of there. Once I looked in the armoire, it was over, I think, but, uh, that's crazy. Okay. Why were we there? Oh yeah, we were going to the feed store. Well, I'm kind of bummed. I wanted to know what the secrets of Borge's house were. So, you managed to get the bag that engine? Got it right here. Man, I can't believe you looked at the daughter. Hey man, I tried not to. I was like, I was like across the room. She, it was like... You know, if she was standing directly that way, I was kind of looking this way. Or, you know, if she was standing in front, I was kind of looking this way. Just because my body was facing her did not mean I was looking at her. Um, alright. Well, we've done some things for people. You enter the darkened back room that says keep out. A man is standing behind a desk, pouring over a messy array of books and maps. He looks up and glares at you as you enter. Who the devil are you? Uh, hi, I'm ASDF Gaming. Okay, but the implied second half of that question was, what the heck are you doing in my office? I don't actually know, but the people outside let me in. Huh. Well, if they vetted you, you must be okay. Name's Jasper. You signing on to help with our mission? What mission is that? We're blowing up Hellstrom's oil refinery, that's what. Oh, wow. Must be Jasper's cat. Uh, what's your cat's name? Abby Abby. Why'd you name her twice? Because I don't let society tell me what to do. Okay, can I pet Abby Abby? Peruse the books. We got Anarchy Through Spirituality. Oh, oh no. Oh, oh boy. Okay. We're gonna read it. If you gather, if you do, it'll increase your mysticality by three. Um, beautiful. You add hundreds of mantras to what you ironically refer to as your arsenal of peace. Gather your cheese chi has been upgraded. Unfortunately, the last mantra you memorized apparently took up. This, this counts as mysticality, I believe, because it's a magical thing. I think it counts as mysticality. So, yeah. Okay, I'm not making combat items. 
This poster looks out of place. Hey Jasper, what does AARP stand for? Association of Anarchist Rebels and Pirates. Neat. Map of Grey Counter. Okay, before we talk to him, I want to go talk to the rest of the residents in this area. And uh, before I talk to them, that does it for this episode. We have reached the end of our time. So I want to say thank you guys for coming on by Taco. It's always nice having you when you have days off and you get to come by for a stream. Um, you can catch the rest of these on YouTube. I've been uploading them all. And uh, as always, hope you have a great rest of your day. Oh, if you're on YouTube, please like and subscribe. I'd really appreciate it. It's only one or two clicks for you. And now, as always, I hope we have a great rest of your day. And I'll see you guys in the next one.